Hello everyone, my name is PJ and welcome back to another Dries Coupler demonstration video. Our video today will be demonstrating to you the ideal setup that ergonomically assists operators when using the couplers and more importantly, how to operate it safely. In our demonstration, we have a three quarter inch R2 hose fitted with a one inch female swivel. This may differ from side to side. This is then connected to a one inch straight swivel, which is needed for purely helping the operator ergonomically when using stiff R2 type hoses. After the swivel, it is then connected to a 45 degree adapter, which plays an important role as not everyone uses this hose size and can also have many more additional fittings to adapt to the grease coupler. Without the 45 degree adapter, if all the additional fittings were lined up straight, it will add an additional lateral bending moment force on the coupler, which will damage both the nozzle and the receiver. The 45 degree adapter is fitted directly to the nozzle, which is correctly connected to the receiver, which is set up to show the pressure rating for when we lock off the valve and create the intended back pressure you would get when the transfer of grease is complete. I'm now off to turn on the pump, but I will say it is very important that you run grease through the connection to ensure that there is no air trapped in the system. You will initially see a little bit of grease that comes out, then the full flow. This is the air being bled out of the system and is what needs to be done before disconnecting the couplers. I'll now turn off the valve and the pump will eventually deadhead and come to a stop. As you can see, it reads roughly about 1200 PSI. I'm now going to talk you through how to safely disconnect the nozzle from the receiver and just to show how easy this is, I'll even get some grease on my hands and put some on the nozzle. Make sure you firmly grasp the back of the nozzle like this and use your fingertips to apply pressure to the face of the nozzle and you'll see it easily pulls back and disconnects. Now, depending on the type of grease and pump, etc., etc., you'll have residual grease on the nozzle and receiver. It's not just good practice to clean both thoroughly, but it also prevents any foreign contaminants getting into the system. Make sure it is wiped very clean, including the grooves of the receiver. Proving how safe it is to use these couplers, under pressure, you can even see we push to pop it and it will not explode with grease. I will now line up the nozzle with the receiver. Now, whether you're using your right hand or the left hand, you need to make sure you firmly grip the back of the nozzle. This should fit in the crevice of the thumb and finger easily. Due to the setup I have right here, I will use my left hand. I'll line the nozzle up and push until the connection is made. Please note, if you are unsure of the connection, disconnect and reconnect to be absolutely sure. I will now turn on the valve and the flow of grease will commence. Let's do this again and watch closely this time as the pressure reading has now gone up to 1400 PSI. I'll get some more grease and wipe it all over the nozzle. Remember, using your fingertips, push back on the face of the nozzle and watch it disconnect easily. It is really important that you understand that using a host of adapters straight from the nozzle will apply unnecessary bending moments. By having this 45 adapter, you will alleviate all of this force and the system will work seamlessly. This time, I'll use my right hand, but again, firmly at the back of the nozzle and line it up for connection and under pressure, you will see it connect.
By using this example, you will not damage the couplers in any way and all the operators will be safe. As you can see from the following images, there was no damage done to the receiver. Thanks for watching.